hello friends now today we are going to start with hydrodynamics that is fluid in motion so let us start with hydrodynamics see friends here we are going to start the hydrodynamics with few important terms like steady flow what do you mean by steady steady means consistent then here the liquid will flow it will have constant pressure or velocity then such type of flow is called as steady flow always keep in mind whatever flow line we are going to observe will be parallel in your steady flow they are not going to cross each other next is flow line actually friends it is the path followed by moving particles okay can you see these lines these lines are flow lines now what do you mean by string line okay if you draw a tangent to this flow line then those tangent will be parallel and we show you the direction of flow hence such lines are called as string lines okay for string line or and flow line these are actually identical therefore such flow is related with the steady flow in short whenever this line will be parallel and will not cross each other then such lines and imaginary lines through which your particles are flowing is called as string line next is flow tube see friends this is the tube which is imaginary tube through which your flow line will not cross over each other or will not come out of it along with this consider surface area it will pass only that will be restriction or limitation for the streamline flow such imaginary tube is called as flow tube next is laminar flow and turbulent flow see friends <coughs> your laminar flow is also called as streamline why it is called as streamline because it is the steady flow in which your uh, layer of the liquid flow very smoothly means its each and every layer are parallel to each other okay for example the steady flow of the river or slowly flowing liquid let us take an example of a turbulent okay see friends when the lines will cross each other means they will show rotational motion of the particle over here or in short they will cross each other at that time your discharge will have or rate of flow of velocity will have no proper direction or no specific direction means it will not show any steady flow then such pattern will be observed circular pattern will be observed in crossing of each and every particle such flow is called as turbulent flow for example flooded river or the tap through which the high speed water is running next is the distinction between streamline flow and turbulent see friends first of all we are going to start with the critical velocity the velocity above which your streamline flow or laminar flow becomes turbulent is called as critical velocity means critical velocity is the typical number or typical velocity above which your laminar flow will become turbulent okay so here the velocity in streamline flow is less than critical velocity but in turbulent flow the velocity will be more than typical velocity okay in your streamline flow the velocity of the fluid will always remain constant because the flow will be uniform but in turbulent flow the velocity will not be uniform will not be constant okay here according to the statement streamline flow during your streamline flow the streamline will never cross each other but in turbulent flow they will always cross each other okay now see in your streamline flow when the liquid layer will pass over one another okay so it will have certain particular area of cross section and it will pass uniformly in this way but here in turbulent flow actually the particles or the layer will not be uniform they will move in random direction so to understand that concept let us start with the critical velocity see friends critical velocity is the velocity above which your laminar flow becomes turbulent okay and below critical velocity your flow is laminar so here critical velocity plays very vital role or very important role see 
Your flow is streamlined or turned, but it can be differentiated with critical velocity. That's why it is very important. Now, how we can predict whether the flow is laminar or turbulent? So, in short, here critical velocity depends on Reynolds number that is R and eta that is efficiency rho that is density and D is the uh, diameter of the tube or pipe through which the liquid is flowing. Now, here, see friends, what do you mean by Reynolds number? Okay, your Reynolds number is a pure number. Actually, your Reynolds number Rn is equal to this rho and d that is density and diameter of the pi will come to numerator. So we can write rho here this is that is critical velocity d diameter of the pi divided by this eta. Now what do we mean by eta friends? Your eta is called as coefficient of viscosity. We will see it later. Okay. Now see friends in previous Lecture, I told you the law number according to engineering fluid mechanics, but now according to our state board and SCRT, your Reynolds number lies in between 1000, 2000, and in between 1000 and 2000. Okay, so if your Reynolds number is obtained by using this formula, then it decides whether the fluid is laminar or turbulent. So, see friends, the speciality of your Reynolds number is that it is a pure number. First thing, it is a pure number. As it is a pure number, it has no unit, no dimension. Can you see this? It is a pure number, it has no unit and no dimension. Next, if you have obtained your Reynolds number, it is less than 1000 according to our board exam, then it is considered as a laminar. If your Reynolds number is greater than 2000, then it is turbulent. And if your Reynolds number lies in between 1000 and 2000, then it is at the intermediate state. Such state or such flow is called as a transition flow. We can say unsteady flow because it is in between the parallel that is laminar flow or uniform flow and the turbulent flow. Okay. So in this way, your Reynolds number is the most important flow in your fluid mechanics. Now next term is about viscosity. See friends, viscosity is most important term because uh, the opposition or the friction can be observed in viscosity. Now let us take a simple example. Imagine that we are having water in a glass and oil in a glass and uh, let us say honey in third glass. So we have three glasses. One is filled with water, second is filled with oil and third one is filled with Honey. So, when this liquid will flow, first of all, water will travel with high speed because of its less viscosity. Second number will be of oil, and third number will be of your honey. So, why all these three are liquid but still flowing with different velocity just because of this property viscosity? It is the property by virtue of which the motion between the two different layers experience the opposing force that is dragging force. Okay, so it happens due to friction between the layer. So in short, in your fluid mechanics, here we study that all the liquid layer flow one over one over each other and produces the opposing force, that dragging force, which is directly proportional to your viscosity. More will be the force, more will be the viscosity. So force is maximum in case of your honey as compared to water and oil. Therefore, the viscosity of uh, honey will be more compared to oil and water. The viscosity or opposing force for oil is more than water as compared to honey. So in this way, your viscosity plays a very major role for the flow of your fluid. Okay. Now, the important thing is that cohesive force, that is force of attraction between the two molecules of the same material is called as cohesive force. It plays important role in viscosity of the liquid. But in case of gases, it is different things. In gases, actually the collision plays a major role. Collision, it depends for gas to gas. It varies between gas to gas. Therefore, for different gases also, viscosity is different. Now, see friends, here also there is one of the most important terms like velocity gradient. 
See friends, whenever gradient this term arises, you have to take the, uh, distance at the denominator. Always keep in mind. For example, if it is velocity gradient, it is velocity upon distance. If it is temperature gradient, then it is temperature upon distance. If it is pressure gradient, it is pressure upon distance. So in this way, here if you want to study the velocity of different layer along with its distance covered, then you can write dv upon dx. Means it is rate of change of velocity with respect to distance. Then such term is called as your velocity gradient. Means variation in the velocity with respect to its distance. So it is very simple term, right? Now how uh, we will get its unit? Your velocity is measured in meter per second upon dx is distance measured in meter. Again, meter meter will get cancelled. So one upon second that is second inverse. See friends, what is unit of your uh, dv upon dx that is velocity gradient? It is one upon second that is second inverse. Means what? It is equivalent to hertz. So see. Your velocity gradient is having same unit and dimension as that of frequency because it is reciprocal of time period therefore it is having same unit second inverse and here your velocity gradient is also having second inverse. So in this way your velocity gradient is important term that we have studied over here. Now next is Newton's law of viscosity. See friends as I told you that eta is important term it is called as coefficient of viscosity and we will see it later on. Now it is the time that we are going to study about the eta, that is coefficient of viscosity. Okay, so according to Isaac Newton, when the liquid flows, it flows with the of layer over one another and it produces an opposing force, it is called as dragging force. So that dragging force depends directly on the area. Now, which area, friends? It is not area of the tube. Always keep in mind. This is the area of the parallel layer. Whatever this is parallel layer, this is parallel layer. So you are going to consider the area of this parallel layer, not area of the tube. Okay. So it is that proportional to area and velocity gradient that is dv upon dx. So see, converting this directly proportionality into equality. So whenever we convert our proportionality equality, so at that time we have to give certain constant of proportionality and here that constant of proportionality will be eta times a instead bracket d v upon dx. Okay. So see friends, this eta is called as coefficient of viscosity, therefore I can write here eta is equal to c this area and d v upon dx will come to numerator. Therefore, here f upon a inside bracket d v upon dx. So in this way we have obtained the formula for coefficient of viscosity. See friends, many number of times the dimension of your coefficient of viscosity is asked in your competitive exam. So first of all what do you mean by theta and how we can define it? Actually from this formula we can define it as it is the uh, viscous force per unit area per unit velocity gradient. Okay, viscous force as it is a force it is measured in Newton. Per unit area measured in meter square. Per unit velocity gradient. Velocity is meter per second per meter. Okay. Now, see friends, it is it can be written as Newton upon denominator. Denominator will come to numerator. So meter second will come to numerator upon meter square into meter meter cube. See friends here, one meter, one meter will get cancelled, meter square will remain. Therefore, what is your final unit? Newton second per meter square. So in this way, we have obtained unit for your eta, that is coefficient of viscosity. So what should be its dimension or force? Always learn it as it is the m1, l1, t minus 2, it is dimension for Newton, that is force. Second is given, therefore it is a t1. And meter square it is at the denominator, therefore I am going to write like L2. So L2 will come to numerator, it will become minus 2. So minus 2 plus 1, it will become minus 1. So M1 L minus 1. T1 and T minus 2 will become T minus 1. So in this way, we now obtain the dimension of your coefficient of viscosity that is M1 L minus 1 T minus 1. Okay. So, see friends, this is the uh, simplest case of uh, Newton's law of viscosity and from this 
love, we will come to know about the coefficient of dispersity that is eta. Okay, now let us go for next important term. That is Stokes law. See friends, your Stokes law is completely based on sphere. When a solid sphere, we call it as a chara, when we insert it inside the liquid, at that time it falls down continuously. So, whenever it will falls down, fall down inside the liquid, it will have a drag force or opposite force or flood force. Okay, so the viscous force will act surrounding the liquid. So, how much will be the viscous force? Let us imagine that the coefficient of viscosity of this liquid is eta. The sphere is having radius small r. And if it is traveling with a certain speed, let us say its speed is or v, velocity v, then your viscous force Fp is directly proportional to eta r v. Okay? Eta is coefficient of viscosity, as I told you, r is the radius of the sphere and v is the velocity with which your sphere is flowing. So converting proportionality into equality, here we will have your Fp viscous force is equal to 6 pi, that is your constant, okay, constant of proportionality, eta r v. So in this way, we have obtained the viscous force acting on the solid sphere. And this is what your Stokes law. So let us see now what do you mean by Stokes law. The viscous force Fp acting on a small sphere falling through the viscous medium, as it is shown in figure, is directly proportional to radius of the sphere, here r, velocity v, and the coefficient of viscosity that is eta. So you just have to keep in mind on the meaning of the term and just keep it directly proportional. That is what your Stokes law. Right? Now, see friends. Let us go for next term. Okay, so we are going to that. We have to solve numerical. Now, a steel ball with radius zero point three mm is falling through the velocity two meter per second at the time small t through a tube filled with glycerin. See, glycerin medium is given. Coefficient of viscosity that is eta is given here. What was velocity v? Okay, and radius r was given in terms of mm converted into meter. Then viscous force, that is Fb is R. What is our general formula? F is equal to 6 pi eta Fb. Whatever given terms, just keep it over there, multiply it, you will get your answer. So, this is a very simple problem. Okay, no need to solve it by visualization, you can actually solve it. Simple term, right? So, let us go for next term, that is terminal velocity. It is important, friends. Actually, this formula is useful for. Uh, so, determining the term velocity, terminal velocity, that is final velocity, and also eta. Okay, so imagine that we are having a body or a spherical ball, also, it is falling with uh, the downward force due to gravity. So, so its own weight will be mg, that is acting in particular in upward direction. But see, friends, there will be two forces that will act on this body. One will be up thrust provided by this liquid and viscous force that is acting surrounding to this. Uh, sphere. So, whatever it is total downward force, it will be balanced by total upward force according to our concept of mechanics. Imagine that rho is the density of the uh, body and sigma is the density of the liquid. Okay. So, what is our uh, first of all general formula of force? F is equal to mg, right? But what is mass? M is equal to rho b g. Keeping in mind, V is what volume, not velocity over here. So see, this volume of the solid sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So force acting in the downward direction of this body can be written as for volume, I am writing 4 by 3 pi r cube and this rho g. Okay. So same formula can be written directly over here, 4 by 3 pi r cube, that is volume. Rho is the density of this sphere and g is acceleration due to gravity. Is equal to next important thing. See friends, how much viscous force is acting upon it? It is 6 pi eta v. Already we have seen it. Plus, again, the viscous force that is 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma g, not rho, because this sigma is the density of the liquid. So, see friends, now here 
how adjustment can be made. See this term will come to LHS. Okay. It is having certain common things like 4 by 3 pi r cube and g. So what will remain inside the bracket? O minus sigma. Okay. Now what is our purpose? To find this uh, equation to obtain the velocity. So we will remain as it is. Remaining term will come to right hand side and will come to denominator. Now cancel similar term like pi pi 1 r here r cube uh, 1 r square will remain. So what will remain? Hence the velocity v is equal to 2 upon 9 times r square g inside bracket rho minus sigma 1 eta. Okay. If you want to find out eta, eta will come to numerator velocity v will come to denominator. So in this way we can find out the terminal velocity that is final velocity with which the object will flow in the liquid. Now let us find out the next term. Okay, before going to that example is there, so let us solve the numerical. A spherical drop of the oil falls at constant speed. Constant speed means velocity is given in centimeter per second. Okay, keep in mind, it is just read. Calculate the radius of the drop. R where of the radius is R where the density is given in terms of gram per cubic centimeter. Go. So density of the air is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Coefficient of viscosity is given. So see friends. Coefficient of viscosity is also given in the air, that is theta is given. So, what we have to do? Uh, what we have to find out first of all, we have to find out the radius. Okay? So, what is our general formula? Uh, theta is equal to 2 upon 9 r square rho minus sigma outside bracket g upon t. So, radius we have to find out here, r square is given, right? So, See here, the remaining term 9b at the denominator will come to numerator and 2 inside bracket rho minus sigma g will come to denominator. So r, r square is equal to 9 theta v upon 2 rho minus sigma g. But taking under root of both sides, so r is equal to under root of 9 theta v upon 2 rho minus sigma g. So see friends, theta is given. Okay, that is 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 4. V is given 4 cm per second. See, friends, poise and centipoise are the unit of the eta. Okay. Now, let us convert it and let us put it over here. Uh, instead of converting, all the terms are given in the CGS. So, no need to convert it directly on writing. And see, friends, here simply here 2 here is present and here you can write uh, instead of 4, 2. So, 2 multiplied by 9, 18. 18 multiplied by 18. And return, you can take square of the 80 and again 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1 multiplied by 980, so it will become 98. So after solving, you will get 0 0.574. Okay, 